Welcome to today's video. Today, I'm gonna to share with you my ultimate probiotic guide. This video has been very much requested and is gonna be a step-by-step -step progression explaining exactly what types of probiotics to use, at what dosage, and exactly how to go about this process. I'll also say just before we start, that everybody's different and healing is not a one size fits all. So making a full and comprehensive guide like this is quite challenging. However, I've tried to design this in a way where it's gonna work the best for the largest amount of people. So statistically, the likelihood that this will work for you is the highest that I could get it in making a video. So step one, and if you've watched some of my videos before, you probably already know what step one is gonna be. We're gonna start with the custom probiotics delactate free formula. The reason that we're starting with this probiotic is it contains some strains that are absolutely essential. Actually, step one and step two, what we're trying to do are put the species in the gut that are supposed to be there. There was a very interesting study that I saw at some point where researchers traveled to different corners of the globe and they basically, sounds kind of funny to say it, they collected poop from all of these different cultures. So they went to the Inuit and the Eskimos, they went to the Mediterranean, they went to Japan, they went to all these areas where we had centenarians, so people that were living to 100 years or more. And they basically collected all of this poop and then they started looking at it, they started looking at what is it made of, what is in it, what different types of bacteria are present in the store. And one of the common themes is that they had these specific 17 strains of lactobacillus and bifidobacterium organisms. And what we're gonna try and do in steps one and step two is bring back as many of these 17 strains as possible, but doing it in a calculated way where we're less likely to react. We're doing it in a very specific way to minimize reactions and maximize the likelihood that you will tolerate it. So step one is this custom probiotics delactate free formula. This has five or six of these strains that I talked about, but the reason that we're starting here is these are also delactate free, which means if you have any delactate intolerance, these will work well for you. These are histamine and mast cell activation syndrome safe. And in my experience, these are the best tolerated and most gentle probiotics. So this is where we start because we're gonna create a very solid foundation with a minimal likelihood of reaction, allowing us to make the most progress as quickly as possible. One thing I also like about this probiotic and this brand is their probiotics come in a powder and they have these two little measuring spoons that you use to measure your doses. This way we can customize the dose and we can start on what would have essentially been a fraction of a pill. So as a general rule of thumb, what I suggest is starting with one eighth of one baby scoop. So each of these scoops, these baby scoops, is about 25 billion CFUs. So we're starting really small. We're starting in the two to four billion range. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to increase to one full baby scoop as quickly as you're able without experiencing negative reactions. Something I really wanna emphasize now that we're looking at negative reactions is that if you are ever having a negative response, either it's not the right probiotic for you or you're pushing the dose way too fast. When you take a product and you feel bad, that's good because it means it's working. I'm here to tell you today that you're absolutely wrong. You might feel bad because it's working, but it means that you're pushing the dose way too high. The trick is to hold the dose just below reactivity, just below any obvious symptoms. So I want you to hold this point in mind for this probiotic, for the next one, for the one after that, for this whole video, the key is holding your dose just within your zone of tolerance. So we start on one eighth of one baby scoop. I find that when we're starting here, we wanna increase again by one eighth of one baby scoop and we can do so every three to four days. It's really important that we allow three to four days because these probiotics are cumulative. These are potentially colonizing organisms, which means they are living and they can inhabit the digestive system. So they're gonna build up over time and that's kind of the whole point. But it does mean that your dose can change and it can also mean that you might be okay on day one of taking it, but by day three, you start to have problems. So this is why it's really important that we take at least four days before we increase the dose. You can probably skip this step if you're taking another probiotic at a dose of 25 billion CFUs or higher, and you can probably jump straight to one full baby scoop. So now we're at one full baby scoop, we're gonna apply the same kind of formula again, and we're gonna try and reach the adult scoop. So one adult scoop is the equivalent to eight baby scoops. So we're gonna increase one baby scoop at a time 
as quickly as you're able to without negative reactions until you're able to reach a maximum dose of one full adult scoop. There is no time limit on how quickly you do this. I have some people that are able to do this literally in a week. Something I've learned that I find quite funny with probiotics is I'll tell people exactly how to do it very carefully so that nothing bad's gonna happen. And then they're like, yeah, well, I just wanna take a full adult scoop and see what happens. And then they do. And for some people it's fine. For others, they have horrible, absolutely almost like tragic and devastating reactions. So please do err on the side of caution. It, these are very, very strong probiotics. But I have some people that do it in a week. I have some people that it takes more than a year to reach this dose. So you really have to take your time and listen to how your body is responding to them. As we're increasing in increments of a full baby scoop, I would say you probably wanna leave it at least one week between each increase. And of course, if this is too much of an increase for you, you can increase it by half a scoop. You can increase it by a quarter of a scoop, whatever works for you. It's really important that you listen to your body and the goal is we're pushing to increase the dose as quickly as we can. And we're trying to get that dose as high as possible but without you feeling negative symptoms. That's the key. And once you reach the point where you have taken the D-lactate free probiotic, one full adult scoop every day for a week, you have completed step one and you're ready to progress onto step two. In step two, we're going to replace the D-lactate free probiotic with the 11 strain probiotic by the same company. So again, we're trying to build this foundation. However, these five or six new organisms that we're gonna be adding in, they are not as histamine safe, they are not D-lactate free, and they can be a lot more aggressive. Even if you had smooth sailing and you managed to move through the D-lactate free probiotic with very little problems, it's possible you could react at this stage. So the trick here is we're gonna basically swap one baby scoop of the D-lactate free for one baby scoop of the 11 strain, and over time, we're gonna replace it. So we start and you're at eight baby scoops, of the D-lactate free formula and zero baby scoops of the 11 strain formula. What we're gonna do is we're gonna subtract one baby scoop from the D-lactate free and we add one baby scoop of the 11 strain. And we keep doing this. So we take one from here and we add another one. We take another one and we add another one. And then at the midpoint, we're on four of the D-lactate free and four of the 11 strain. And we keep going until we reach the point where you've completely transitioned off and you're not taking any of the D-lactate free probiotic anymore, and you're just taking eight baby scoops or one adult scoop of the 11 strain formula. The reason we do this is although the dosage is the same or very similar, as in the total CFU count doesn't change very much, the fact that we're increasing the diversity of organisms actually makes this probiotic significantly more potent. The way that you wanna think about probiotics when you're adding strains is it's not that you add strains, it's that you multiply them. So for example, if you're looking at the, the D-lactate free probiotic and you've got six strains in there, to calculate the potency, you're kind of thinking more about it. Instead of it being six strains, do six times six. So you've got 36. So the total power of the D-lactate free probiotic is 36. But then when we're going to the 11 strain, it's not just 11. Oh, 11 is five more than six because you think, oh, they're quite similar. There's not that much difference. You need to do 11 times 11 and you're left with 121. So you can see this 11 strain probiotic, it's only five more strains. It's about three times more powerful. So even though the CFU is staying the same, or very similar, the fact that the diversity is increasing makes it significantly more powerful. And that's why we need to do this transition slowly. So work through this as quickly as you're able. Again, I would probably suggest doing one swap every seven days or so. But if you can do it more quickly, great. And if you need to do it more slowly, then that's fine too. Just go with what your body says. And remember, pushing through, feeling bad, having negative symptoms does not make you heal faster. You have to get that idea out of your head because it's not going to help you. It's going to hold you back. Once you have completely discontinued the D-lactate free probiotic and you've added in eight baby scoops or one full adult scoop of the 11 strain formula, you've completed step two and you're ready to move on to step three. In step three, our goal is to increase this diversity even further. And we can do that in one of three ways. And the way that we do this is gonna look slightly different depending on what you've got going on. If you know you're dealing with a lot of pathogens in the gut, and you seem to have relatively good levels of the probiotic bacteria, but you just seem to have some pathogenic organisms in, two of note that can be very affected by this next stage are strep and staph. So if you've got strep or staph problems, or if you just have, let's say overgrowths, candida, or any types of organisms that are tending to be opportunistic or pathogenic, 
then the next probiotic that we consider adding in would be a soil based organism something like my favorite which is youth and earth but this would also include other probiotics like megaspore so the effective dose of these is very small we're talking in the four to eight billion range the thing is spore based probiotics work differently from the colonizing lactobacillus and bifidobacterium organisms so you don't need such a high dose if this is you and this is what the next step looks like for you we just add these in on top we don't remove the 11 strain we keep the 11 strain where it is and we add this one in the other option is that we're trying to work on this diversity piece even further and we're going to add a different probiotic with the goal of trying to increase the amount of lactobacillus and bifidobacterium strains even further my favorite option for this is the seed probiotic but this is something that you have to buy on subscription which i don't really like if that's not a problem for you this would be my top suggestion if it's a bit difficult for you to get seed or you don't like that subscription model which i totally understand you could look at using a garden of life probiotic instead. So if we're looking at the seed probiotic, this is actually a symbiotic. It does have a prebiotic in it. That's not why I suggest it. The reason I suggest seed is it has 25 different strains. So again, if we're thinking about how we calculate potency, 25 times 25, the potency of seed is 625. It's huge. The amount of diversity in this probiotic is enormous. I've found that the seed probiotic seems to be more effective than other probiotics, even at higher doses. I don't know exactly why. Maybe it's the prebiotic. Maybe it's the specific strains that they use. I honestly have no idea, but it seems to work really well. And your backup option, if you can't do this, if it's hard to get, or if you don't do well with the prebiotic or any of these would be the garden of life probiotics these probiotics can have up to 50 organisms in them so again if we're thinking about potency multiplicatively so again if we're thinking about how we calculate the dosage here 50 times 50 2500 this is very potent this is extremely high also the garden of life probiotics tend to come in a dose of 50 to 100 billion so what i'd look at doing in this stage is figure out what dose you're taking of the seed or of the garden of life and subtract that dose from your 11 strain probiotic so for example if you're taking a garden of life probiotic that is 100 billion you would want to reduce the dose of the 11 strain by approximately half and what you could eventually look at doing transitioning that 11 strain probiotic so you're not taking any of it and you're taking two of the garden of life probiotics at 200 billion you're not going to be able to fully transition it but you could be taking let's say 25 or 50 billion of seed and then you're taking the other 150 billion from the 11 strain probiotic and you can take these together even the soil based organism these are all synergistic they're going to create this symbiotic situation in your gut so they're all going to work together so the primary goal at this stage is to increase the diversity even further so if you've added in whatever the dosage says on the bottle of either seed or garden of life then you've completed step three and you're ready to move on to step four as a bonus step you can add a soil based organism in at this point this can be helpful for SIBO candida if you've got strep or staph or if you're dealing with potentially pathogenic things like entamoeba or blastocystis so that's an optional step but it can be really helpful for the people that it does work for now you're ready for step four this is where it really starts to get fun so in step four we're looking at adding fermented foods i'll just say if for some reason you're not able to tolerate fermented foods if it's salicylate problem oxalate problem histamine problem whatever it is just skip this step that's completely fine but if you are able to tolerate fermented foods this is the place to bring them in the reason that we've been holding off of fermented foods up until this point is the fact that there are many more variables involved in fermented foods than in standardized probiotics and it's really hard to control for these variables and therefore control for the reactions that these foods can cause not only does the dosage change batch to batch but you also get different varieties you get different species fermented foods will also contain viruses and this isn't a bad thing you have probiotic viruses as well but most probiotic supplements that you get with probiotic bacteria they're quite sterilized whereas in a fermented food all of these organisms are going to have their own virome and there's just there's just an order of magnitude of more complexity you've also got the plant biochemicals the polyphenols and flavonoids there's a lot more going on so as a general rule of thumb if you tend towards the constipation side you probably do better with fermented vegetables to start with and if you tend towards looser stools you might benefit more from fermented dairy that's a general rule of thumb you don't have to do it exactly that way but that's the way dr natasha campbell mcbride of the gaps diet suggests that you do it what i would do at this stage would either be starting with yogurt on the dairy side or either sauerkraut or kimchi 
on the vegetable side. And we want to start really small and we're adding these complementary on top of all of the probiotics that we're already doing. We're not replacing them, these are on top. We've got those probiotics in place to keep a really good foundation to make it so that the microbiome is functioning and has the organisms that it needs to do all of the jobs that the microbiome is supposed to do. And then we're gonna add these on top so they can do even more work and even more heavy lifting. So if you're starting with the sauerkraut, literally one teaspoon of the juice is enough. That is a very strong dose. So start very small. If you're working with the yogurt, just a teaspoon. As you begin to build up the dose, we want to do it again, gradually, watching for reactions, watching for any negatives. As you're tolerating the juice of the fermented vegetables, start to add in the solids as well. There's a really nice trick that you can do here where if you have any specific food sensitivities, let's say you're sensitive to onions or garlic, you can make your own fermented foods at home using onions and garlic you'll create an environment that feeds the organisms that like to break down fibers and the substances that are in onions and garlic. You can then drink the liquid to re-inoculate your gut with those organisms that you might be missing. And then you can eat the onions and garlic that are there and they have less of those prebiotic fibers because the bacteria in the fermentation process have already begun to break them down. This way we can reintroduce foods that you're sensitive to and especially the different types of FODMAP fibers that you might be sensitive to. So I'd suggest start with something you know you tolerate but then as you progress along with these fermented foods, begin to ferment foods that you don't tolerate so well. And we're going to build that machinery back up inside of your body so you can be able to digest those foods again. The ultimate fermented food is kefir. We're looking at trillions of CFUs of dosage and between 50 and 80 strains of bacteria and up to five or six different strains of beneficial yeasts as well. So let's go 86 times 86, 7,396. The potency of this is just incredible. There is nothing that compares to it. This is the top level of probiotics. So even if you're doing like the maximum dose of all the probiotics that we've talked about, even if you're tolerating kimchi and sauerkraut really well, you're doing yogurt and that's going great. You have to start really slow with kefir. It is insanely strong. I'm talking half of a teaspoon. You cannot compare yogurt to kefir. I know they both look similar, but they are not even on the same level. So start on half a teaspoon and increase in the dosage of half a teaspoon. Build this up really gradually over time because this is like, if we look at the other probiotics, these are like sticks and stones, and this is a nuclear bomb. So seriously, go slowly on this. I know of people that have been hospitalized from drinking too much kefir, triggering inflammatory bowel diseases, Crohn's colitis, massive IBS flare-ups. It's seriously powerful, so be careful. So I would say that you are you can either completely bypass step four if you don't tolerate fermented foods, but the goal would be to add in about half a cup of fermented foods every day and work on that kefir dosage gradually over time. Step five, and this is the final step, this is where I would suggest that we do some stool testing and we look at targeting prebiotics specifically according to what your microbiome is missing. The company that I would recommend for this would be Biomesite. The reason being, they have this really cool infographic that walks you through exactly what organisms you have, what levels, and what prebiotic substances will be good for them. And then it correlates all of this data and provides you with this really handy chart at the end. I'm gonna attach mine just here, just so you can have a look at what I'm talking about. It tells you exactly what types of prebiotics can be really helpful for your gut. So I wouldn't recommend that you just go crazy and start throwing a bunch of random prebiotics in at this stage. Take a look at what's going on in your microbiome and try to build your prebiotic plan according to what your current microbiome is saying. Generally speaking, the best prebiotics in my experience are PHGG, lactulose, HMOs, colostrum, and working to incorporate the FODMAP vegetables. And again, if you're struggling with that, that's what the step previous to this one is for. So the goal from here would be to continue on with the probiotics that you already have, that solid foundation. Add the fermented foods, that way we can get even more diversity and we're getting all of these other variables as well. And then we look at what your gut is doing we see how it's responding to all of these things. And if your gut looks amazing, like no problem, just keep doing what you're doing, keep eating the way you're eating. But you might do a test and say, oh look, my bifido is still a bit low. Oh, my acromantia is still a bit low. And this test will give you the best options for different types of prebiotics that you can use specifically for your gut. Now there's always, now you always have to look at things in context. For example, lactulose, you've probably heard of this before, is used to test for people with SIBO. So. If this is telling you that lactulose is going to be really good, but you know that you're currently dealing with SIBO symptoms, you might not do well with this prebiotic fiber. You might do better with something that's a little bit more SIBO safe, 
like colostrum or PHGG. So it's not exactly just do what the test says, it's the test is gonna provide some useful information and you can use that to help you target the prebiotics a little bit better. And now I'm gonna go into some special considerations for people that may be a bit more sensitive or maybe get stuck on one of these points. I'm gonna help you figure out how to not get stuck in this because it's all well and good for you to have all of this information, but if you try to implement it and you get stuck and you can't even move past step one, the whole video is useless. So I wanna make sure that I equip you with everything you need so that you can actually implement the information that I've presented to you here today. So I'll say, first of all, if you get stuck, ask for help, reach out to me, leave me a comment below, shoot me an email. I'm more than happy to offer you a consultation and I can help you with wherever you're stuck in this progression. As I've said, it's not a one size fits all. This is the best outline that I can give that's gonna have the most success for the largest amount of people, but this might not be what works for you. I know of people that do far better with fermented foods than with any of the probiotics. I know of people that did the delactate free probiotic in just a month and then it took them a year to work through the 11 strain probiotic. I know people that struggled with implementing any probiotics at all until they'd worked on calming down their gut inflammation and working on the five pillars, you know, supporting the stomach acid, digestive enzymes, bile, motility, and mucosa. So if you feel like you're stuck with any of this, reach out and ask for help. I've literally helped thousands of people with the digestive systems. It probably must be close to two, three, four, five thousand stool tests by now. So I'm really starting to know what I'm looking for. So if you get stuck or if you just feel like you need help, because I know what it can feel like in this journey, you feel like you're alone and nobody gets it. And you talk about this with your doctor and they're like, what the hell are you talking about? What is acomancy? I've never even heard of it. You know, I get it. I get you. I've been there. I've been laughed out of the doctor's office. I've been applauded out of the doctor's office. The doctor said, you know more than any nutritionist that I could send you to would be able to tell you, you know? I get it, I've been there. So if you just need to talk to someone that gets it, reach out, let me know. But my first general piece of advice is, this takes as long as it takes. There's no point in rushing. It literally is just gonna make your life miserable. I know some people that believe that they will never heal. And going from, I'm never gonna heal to, I could heal, but maybe it's gonna take 10 years to work my probiotic dose up. That gives you something to aim at. That gives you something to work on. There's a lot more hope and a lot less desperation in that. So just have realistic expectations, you know? If you are completely disabled, bed bound, and multiple systems in your body, like immune system, adrenal glands, digestive system, in complete collapse, yes, it's probably gonna take you a little bit of time. But if you're what I call the walking wounded, where, you know, maybe you've got like one autoimmune disease, but you're still working a full-time job, let's say a mum of two, but you're just tired and you've got a couple of food sensitivities, you might make your progress through this way faster than you could have ever believed. So you just have to appreciate where you've been, what's going on in your life, how quickly you're going to be able to progress through this. You don't really have control over how long it takes, but you just have to do your best in the moment. I will also say, if any of this doesn't work for you, then don't push through it. Like, let's be real. Like, I'm just some random guy on the internet that just sat in front of a camera and recorded a video. I'm doing it out of the goodness of my heart because I really want you to heal, but this is also just my opinion. And if my opinion doesn't work for you, go and find somebody else's opinion that does, or try and strategize and find a different way to go about this. And two little pieces of advice for extra sensitive people. If you need to increase your dose in tiny, tiny progressions, then do it. It's possible for you to take the dose and dissolve it in a glass of water. So let's say we're gonna go all the way back to step one. If you're struggling to reach a point where you're even able to tolerate one eighth of one baby scoop, and this happens, I can literally count at least 10 people off the top of my head that I know this was the case for them. Take that one eighth of the baby scoop, dissolve it in a glass of water, mix it really well, drink one sip and throw the rest away. This way you're gonna get a fraction of that one eighth of a baby scoop. There is no dose that's too small. If you take that tiny dose and you can still feel it, a reaction, you know that that is, even though it feels ridiculous, it feels like the tiniest, most minuscule, pointless dose that you could ever take. It's clearly not pointless because otherwise it wouldn't affect how you feel. It's still doing the job, it's still working. So again, you don't get to control how fast you progress through this. And if you ne really need to start at one eighth of a baby scoop in one glass of water and you take one sip, that's the reality of your situation. And you just have to start there. Your dose will change over time, not just for the positive, but for the negative. For example, I have a cold or a flu and I've had it for the last six weeks or so. It's been a really nasty one. When I get sick, I feel a lot of these symptoms in my digestive system. It flares up my food sensitivities. I don't feel very good and it significantly decreases my tolerance to probiotics. I've literally had to back my probiotic dosage to completely zero because for me right now, taking 
any probiotics is not helpful. It's really important that you understand that probiotics, your microbiome, is literally like an organ. If you don't have one of your organs, your body isn't going to work as well as it's supposed to. Imagine if you didn't have a lung or if you were missing one of your kidneys. It really affects how your body functions. And if you're missing your microbiome, it's like missing an organ. So it is really important to correct this microbiome imbalances. But if right now you have something going on, if you have an acute injury, if you have a cold or a flu, let's say you eat a food that causes a massive gut health flare up, pause for a couple of days. Healing is about being gentle. It's not about sticking to this rigid routine that causes you to suffer. It's about understanding where your tolerance limit is and how it fluctuates day to day. So if you feel like you're in a place where you can take the probiotics, then do them. And if today is a bad day, if you can't handle it, if you've got something else going on, it's okay to skip a day. It's not gonna be the thing that stops your healing. But if you're on a day where you feel like you can, then you should because your microbiome is an organ and you need it. That is my ultimate step-by-step -step probiotic guide. I hope you found it really interesting and helpful. Let me know, where are you in this progression? Are you one of these people that really does struggle with probiotics? Are you on the other end and you're drinking a glass of kefir every single day? Wherever you're at, let me know. And if you have any questions, please leave them below. And just before I disappear, if you are interested in a consultation, if you feel like you need a little bit more personalized one-on-one -on -one help with implementing what I've talked about today, shoot me an email, support at williamdickinson.co.uk and I'll be sure to get back to you and we can arrange a consultation. Take care and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.